I wish to present to you a narration detailing the profiles of musician survivors and performers so that you, the Holocaust student, can see the impact of music on their lives as individuals. It will explore the lives of a vocalist, Frida Ruz van Hessen, and a violinist, Shawnee Braun. This audio presentation will show how their skills and talents have helped them survive the Holocaust and benefited Holocaust education after liberation. By focusing on the lives of musicians, we will be able to better understand how these artists used music as a tool of resistance, therapy, and knowledge, and ultimately how it will cause their testimonies to have a future impact on Holocaust education and society's collective understanding of the Holocaust. Violinist and Holocaust survivor Mr. Shoni Braun testifies of a life of suffering and pain, yet through his interview he seeks to give God credit for his redemption from the dark depths of Nazi rule. In more than one instance, Shoni claims that he was saved only by the grace of God. The most shocking of these stories is how God saved him through divine intervention and a violin. He was in a group of violinists that the SS had selected for the purpose of auditioning and choosing an entertainer. The two violinists preceding Shoni in the audition process were senselessly murdered by a capo, and Shoni became afraid for his life. In fact, he claims that he forgot every single song that he could play. In that bloodied room, nothing came to my mind. Absolutely nothing. Shoni states that while he stood there, unable to play, the capo picked up an iron pipe and was coming from across the room to kill him. Every nerve in my body knew that I am going to die. He started to pray, and by the time that the capo had almost reached him, he miraculously started to play. He relates to the interviewer with awestruck wonder. When my left hand and right hand started to move in perfect harmony, the, the beautiful blue Danube, this was a miracle not only because he had never played a violin of that size before, but because he had never played the Blue Danube. How did I play it so gloriously, the violin, in that room where they killed already two person? He answers with just three words. It's only God. The way that Shoni tells his story, it becomes a redemptive narrative of how his life was directed by God through music. Regarding the effect of religion on testimony, the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum's Oral History Interview Guidelines state, the religious upbringing and beliefs, as well as the political views or activities of the interviewee and the interviewee's family and friends, are relevant to the understanding of the interviewee's choices and actions during the Holocaust. Shoni's belief in God has allowed him to share his Holocaust experience with others in truly unique and beautiful ways, regardless of its effect on his memory of events. As a composer, he has created one of the few musical works relating to the Holocaust. He states, The Symphony of the Holocaust, my composition, started in Auschwitz. It came back to me right in the concentration camp, over and over the melodies. He continues, I believe that just God wanted it that way. Furthermore, he has shared his musical talents as a violinist worldwide, and also became a loving father and grandfather by the redemption he has found through music. In Shoni's case, we see a man who has created a meaningful life for himself by believing in a Redeemer and trusting that he was meant to live when others died. Compared with a man like Primo Levi, who was haunted by phantoms of the Holocaust and allegedly committed suicide, Shoni lived many years and made a positive impact on those around him. Perhaps this is an acceptable story of redemption. If God truly does exist, as I believe he does, then the peace that Shoni experiences might be a gift from his Redeemer. Regarding God's ability to empower us as humans, the holy book of Isaiah states, They that wait upon God shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Mr. Bond may possess a meaningful and rare gift, a belief that there is something bigger than both himself and the Holocaust that will empower him to live a long and full life. Jewish Holocaust Survivor vocalist and current North Carolina resident Frieda Roos van Hessen was never placed in a concentration or death camp. Although the story of Holocaust survivor Frieda Roos van Hessen is not as musically grounded as Shoni Bronze, as she does not have near-death experiences where she was saved by her musical ability, we can see how her life as a musician was affected by the Holocaust. Her explanation for redemption, like Shoni Bronze, is God's grace. Mrs. Roos van Hessen shares multiple stories about escaping from the Gestapo only by this grace. 
The most memorable of these close encounters with the Gestapo was when they caught her for biking down the center of the road during a traffic trap. The Gestapo was collecting bicycles for the army and took her and her bicycle to the headquarters at Silverstone, not even realizing that she was a Jew. The following remarkable things saved her in this encounter. She obeyed the Gestapo's orders in spite of her temper. She spoke German fluently because of her experience in German theater, and when, in an extreme act of bravery, she demanded to speak with the head officer, she was not even suspected of being Jewish. This last point is remarkable because the head officer had written proof of her registration papers being false. In her words, because now they had gotten wise and they had made a black book of all the so-called lost registration papers given to Jews, and he looked for my number. Now I am absolutely positively sure, as sure as I am sitting opposite you, that my number must have been in there. She then pauses to compare this story to one by Cory Ten Boom, another God-fearing Holocaust survivor, who escaped a strip search with a Bible under her arm, and then continues, So help me God, I know that that number had to be in there, because they were all known. He never saw my number. She then relates her relation at escaping the Gestapo headquarters with a mischievous smile, and I went on my bicycle, and I pedaled away, and I said, And I'm sure that I'm the only Jew you let go. It is a shame that such a talent as Mrs. Van Hessen would be driven away from her country, to which she had performed a great service in musical gifts. She is the sole survivor of an entire family of musicians. All were murdered in the Holocaust. Her mother also sang, and her brothers played the piano and violin. They gave house concerts, performed on the radio, and were well known for the musical talent. At age 19, Mrs. Van Hessen's voice was recorded for the first Dutch version of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves but her family was hunted down, driven out, and murdered. Although she did not actually perform much during the Holocaust, her knowledge of music was a valuable link to culture, to which many prisoners and fugitives of the Holocaust did not possess access. Her performances after escaping from Europe do not reflect a story about the Holocaust for future generations, but possessing the skills to perform allowed her to find employment in the States and ultimately become a respected musician in her new home. We can use the experiences and works of these and other Holocaust survivor escaping musicians for the purpose of learning about the Holocaust. Music originating in or written as a reaction to the Holocaust relates to us all, because we can either hear a survivor's story and experiences conveyed to us through their music in ways that other mediums cannot, or we can appreciate their usage of music in their restoration to society after liberation. We should become an active and interested audience of music originating out of the Holocaust because there is much to learn through Holocaust survivors' usage of this medium. In conclusion, I would like to present some other voices that are sharing music of the Holocaust. Gila Flam of the YIVO Institute has written an article based on issues surrounding musicians in the Holocaust. She covers topics such as music in the ghettos and concentration camps and the different types of songs performed in those settings. Another thing that Flam provides is information on survivors who were musicians in these settings. She touches on how music was a part of what Primo Levi calls the Grey Zone, and the matters of orchestras playing pleasant tunes at death camps and killing centers for the pleasure of German camp personnel. Flam also relates how music written during the Holocaust was documented and published. She also provides a list of suggested reading on the webpage that is relevant to the topic of music and the Holocaust. Finally. The creators of the Music of Remembrance website focus on educating the United States on Holocaust musicians and their art through musical performances, educational programs, musical recordings, and commissions of new works. Specifically, their website contains a list of new musical works relating to the Holocaust. The list currently contains 14 compositions, as well as a detailed page for each, and provides the names of their composers. These pages include a detailed description of the work, where the work has been performed, and a list of the individuals that have performed it. Additionally, the website currently includes five video interviews with the composers that wrote some of these works, providing us with the creative thought processes behind their compositions. Through this kind of scholarship, we must reclaim music as an uplifting and educational resource by connecting the music of these survivors to the larger issues of how we understand oppression or liberation.